Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're gonna regrind some of these tailings here behind me through one of our little tiny mini ball mills and see if we can liberate and recover any more gold. So I've got several sacks here of these tailings, and this is stuff that has all been through our turnkey system. And uh, this is the stuff that the spiral classifier has, uh, the larger stuff that didn't float out of the spiral classifier in the uh, into the tailings pond with the water. And uh, most of this is going to be larger than 200 mesh. Uh, the hammer mill crushes about 70% uh, passing 30 mesh and about 50% passing 50 mesh. Um, and so I'm hoping that we can take this stuff and grind it up and liberate some more gold. All right, so I'll just kind of shovel out some of these tailings into these buckets. My goal is to get about 100 pounds which is going to be a 20th of a ton, and then we can do some easy math on how much gold is left per ton in these tailings. But our system that we use is all gravity concentration, and there's no chemicals, there's no cyanide, there's no leaching or flotation or anything, and so there's a limit to the size of gold you can capture with gravity recovery. And you can't, you know, there's, there's, it's about two to 300 mesh, maybe 400 mesh. And then your recovery really starts to taper off because the gold is so fine that it, it just can't settle in the water down onto the shaker table or in the sluice box or whatever you're using. And um, we use a shaker table. It has a uh, really very good recovery, but again, there's a limit. And so um, a lot of the bigger, uh, mills and mines, they use flotation, they use cyanide, um, which is, you know, really, really good at catching that, that super fine gold, that 500, 800, 1,000 mesh gold. Uh, and then and then they get a, a much higher recovery um, because they can capture the fine, fine stuff. All right, here's our two buckets. And I just got them weighed. There's, a, there's 107 pounds here. And I went over because the sand's a little bit damp. And so I wanted to compensate for some of the moisture content in there. So we're, we're right around a hundred pounds of true, uh, tailings when you take out the water weight. But let's see if we can do this and get focused here. Here's kind of the characteristic of this stuff. And it's kind of like beach sand. Most of it's, you know, 30 mesh and smaller. And so. The idea is there may be fine gold particles still attached here. And when we grind them up a lot finer, we liberate more gold that we can hopefully capture uh, with our shaker table and recover. So I don't know how much gold I recovered from these tailings. I've done lots of different samples and a little bit at a time, sometimes a ton at a time through our turnkey system. Um, I've got lots and lots of videos showing the turnkey system running. So you can check those out on our channel. Um, but, you know, I don't really know exactly, this isn't going to be a percent recovery test. This is going to be uh, just figuring out how much more we can recover out of our tailings. I don't really care how much I've got out of them already. What I want to know is, if, is it profitable to rerun the tailings after the first pass through the hammer mill and recover more gold? So if I can get an extra quarter ounce a ton by grinding them uh, to, let's say, 200 mesh to pick a number, um, to grind them finer and I get an extra quarter ounce a ton, then that's probably worth doing. But if I, if I grind a hundred pounds and I get, you know, a, a tenth of a gram, um, that, that's not enough to chase, uh, regardless of how much gold I got out of them. So this is really just kind of, uh, uh, is it profitable to reprocess the tailings at all? So now let's go take a look at the turnkey system that we use. Um, it's, I'm not going to run it, but I'll just kind of walk you through where I got these tailings from and how the system works. And then we'll go run and throw a ball mill. So here's just a real quick walkthrough. This is the hammer mill, does the crushing, uh, wet. The slurry comes out onto the shaker table. The high grade, the gold, and the concentrates come down over here into the number one, number two, and number three concentrates. And then all the tailings flow down through this pipe into this spiral classifier. And this thing turns real slow. And anything that settles down in this basin of water down to the bottom gets augered up this screw and dewatered as it goes. 
and comes out here into a bag or a bin or whatever. And this is the stuff we're going to be running today. The, the dewatered, um, oversized material is what we're going to be crushing and see if we can get any more gold out. If the particle or particles float in this column and they don't sink down to the bottom, they come out here with the water into our uh, tailings pond and then we recirculate the water. About, for, for quartz, it's about 250 mesh is what comes out here. But this is based on settling velocity, not particle size. So quartz is not very dense. So it's a 250 mesh particle that, and, and smaller that can float up out into the water column. But if you're talking about gold, you know, gold is so much more dense than quartz. I, I'm making this number up, but it may be, you know, an 800 mesh piece of gold is still dense enough to settle down in this column and be augered out into our tail or into our uh, oversized tailings. And so you may only have the thousand mesh pieces of gold or smaller that are going out into the tailings pond. So even if uh, you have liberated gold, let's say, that the shaker table doesn't catch for some reason, it's still gonna settle down into this pond or this little catch basin here in the screw and auger out with the oversized quartz tailings into this bin. You know, I, pro I probably think about this way too much and way too often, but I thought about ways to improve this gravity system. You know, right now we just have a shaker table for recovery. Uh, the spiral classifier is really useful for uh, separating the tailings by settling density, essentially settling velocity. Um, so the oversized stuff comes up here for regrind and the fine stuff comes out here with the water. Now, if you wanted to kind of juice this system up a little bit, you could have your primary shaker table for recovery. After your material gets augered up the spiral, it would flow into a ball mill for fine grinding, a shaker table for uh, secondary recovery, and another spiral that would just auger it back up into, the, into this, into the ball mill. So it'd be a continual circuit until it got so fine that it could come out of the second spiral into the tailings pond. The fine stuff that comes out of the first spiral and the fine stuff that comes out of the second spiral would go into a flotation cell and you could recover your uh, any fine sulfides or any free gold that uh, was lost because of our gravity recovery. And you could make a secondary con out of your 200 mesh minus material and uh, you could increase your recovery quite a bit from over just a gravity circuit. So those are the initial thoughts on, you know, how to improve the, the current system we have. Right now, this system is a great system for uh, initial testing and recovery. You got the jaw crusher, uh, a little vibrating feeder for uh, metering the material up into the hammer mill, primary shaker table, and then uh, a tailings management system down here in the bottom. So this works really, really good for sampling, processing, uh, bulk sampling, that kind of thing. But there are certainly ways to improve this uh, the system and uh, flotation and regrinding would be a good way to, to do that. All right, well, here's this little mini ball mill. Um, and it actually vibrates. This is a huge vibrating motor here. It's on springs here, four springs on each corner. And on the inside, it's full of manganese steel balls. And I'm gonna, it's a batch mill, so I'm gonna add uh, our material in here, close up the lid and turn it on and just let it run. Um, and I was thinking on the way over here that normally I, I fill it up about, you know, a, thir a third uh, with balls and then, uh, you know, a lot of the, the space in between the balls gets filled up with, with muck. And so about half full or, or two thirds full with material, they turn it on and it vibrates and, and it crushes it all up. But um, I usually do it wet and I usually add uh, a bunch of water to it. But I'm gonna actually try it dry this time. I'm gonna take our, our two buckets and uh, just put them in there dry, turn it on for half an hour and see what happens, see what it looks like. Um, so that's our plan. Uh, let me get our two buckets of material there in the, in the mill. And actually, while I'm standing here, we've tried rods too. These were rods that we've put in the mill um, and tried and made it a vibrating rod mill. But the balls actually work a lot better. Um, I, I don't know if it's our situation or what, but uh, the balls seem to work a lot better for us.
All right, guys, well, here is the inside. I've got about 20 minutes of runtime on this, and it's quite a bit finer already. There's still some coarser grains in there, but a lot of that stuff has been pulverized pretty good. But that's pretty good for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna put the end cap back on. We'll run another 20 minutes and see where we're at. All right, guys, we've got another 30 minutes. It's been about, I don't know, a little, a little under an hour total. And this stuff's getting real powdery, um, just fluffy and dusty and stuff. So I'm gonna stop here. Um, we've ground it a significantly, significantly more. Um, and it's quite a bit finer. So if there's if there's more gold in here, we've released at least some of it. I mean, I can barely feel any grains between my fingers. So it's it's quite a bit finer. Um, so let me get this uh, let me get this thing cleaned out, and uh, we'll go run under the table see if we can recover some more gold. All right, guys. So here's our stuff. This is the stuff that's been through the ball mill. Uh, I only ran one bucket, so I've only run about 50 pounds of material. This is the stuff. Uh, that's directly out of the spiral classifier. Um, so it can, can kind of compare the difference there. Uh, but now let's go, uh, I'm gonna wet this stuff up a little bit, get it into a slurry, and then I'll run it on our shaker table, see if we can cover any more gold. All right guys, so uh, before we get the shaker table fired up, um, I'm gonna do a little test pan here. This is the stuff um, before it went through the ball mill. And I'm gonna just pan it into a little catch pan and just double check and see if there's any gold free gold in this stuff before we crushed it to see if the shaker table is not working right or losing a little bit of gold. So I'll pan this down and we'll see what we get. Here's the material before the ball mill. And uh, so it's been on the shaker table. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but there is, there's no gold in there whatsoever. There's no, no fine gold, no free gold, nothing. There's just a little whisper of black sand here and uh, some looks like pyrite maybe, um, but there's no free gold that I can pan out of the, the tailings before we ball mill them. So now let me do a little pan, a little test pan here and see if there's any gold in the stuff we did ball mill. All right, I just took my ball mill sample and I just got it wet. I was gonna pan it down, but see this, this sheen here on the surface? That's all, um, pulverized super super fine sulfides and I didn't see that at all with the uh, tailings before the ball mill so the ball mill is actually pulverized and liberated you know some some uh, some extra black sand sulfides and so that's I don't know if that's a good sign or not but it is what it is and I, I saw it so I thought I'd uh, at least show you guys that part so let me get this fine stuff panned down and we'll see what we get all right, we got our focused. Here is the stuff that I panned out of the ball mill. And there is some fine gold there. So we've liberated, let's see if I can get a real nice close up here. We've liberated some more gold by grinding it finer. So that's really cool. I, I mean, you know, I, I had a pretty good idea this would work, but um, proof's in the pudding, right? So. We got our gold. The other thing that's interesting here, let me back out and focus, is there's a significant amount more black sand here than in the first, in the in the tailings off the, before we, we ran into the ball mill. So um, not only did we liberate more gold, but we also liberated some more sulfides from the uh, larger pieces of quartz tailings that, um, you know, you had a little piece of quartz and a little piece of black sand or sulfide, and it wasn't dense enough to come across the table into the number three concentrates. Um, but after grinding it, you know, you can separate them out with a pan and, and hopefully on the shaker table here. So um, that's really encouraging. Let's get this stuff uh, run on the shaker table, and we'll see how much additional gold we get out of 50 pounds. Okay, we got our stuff mixed up here. I uh, I just used a, a drill and a paint stirrer over here. Put a little water in there. If you try and uh, feed 
dry, fine material on the shaker table, it just all floats away. Um, and I'm gonna feed it here kind of halfway along the distributor trough. Normally you feed it over there where the hammer mill chute comes in. Um, but it's still fine and there's not very much, so I'm gonna feed it over here and just kind of help it along. The shaker table has a little bit of coarse stuff on it, just from leftover stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just scooping it out of the out of the tub here and pouring it down onto the shaker table. And one of the things that stirring it with a paint stirrer does, I, I believe, is all the gold goes to the bottom of the bucket. So there probably won't be much going on here until the very end when I pour the last two inches of stuff from the bottom of the bucket because that's where all the gold went to when I stirred it all up and mixed it up. So I'll pour this stuff on and uh, I'll check in with you here in a bit when I got this, this all run and we can look at the gold we got. All right guys, I got our whole bucket run and a little pile of gold there. A little streak of gold coming up the first riffle here. A long groove up to the, the cleaning plane here. A little bit of gold, maybe hard to see here. So there was actually a significant amount of gold that um, was released by grinding it finer. And, and actually there's uh, black sand down all these other grooves that I believe we've liberated from the crushing. So uh, a significant amount more sulfides were liberated as well as free gold. So we'll get the table brushed down and get it all in a pan and we'll pan it out and see how much gold we got. Here's a nice little line of fine gold that I'm getting on the table as I brush all this stuff up under the water bar. Um, and at the end of a run, you gotta brush the table down or a lot of the stuff just stays in the grooves. Um, so we'll get this, like I say, all brushed down. It's all just going down in there and the number one concentrates right down here. And we'll get it in a pan, but we got, we got quite a nice little line of gold there. Okay guys, well, there's the gold from 50 pounds. So there is a significant amount of gold in there we recovered just from regrinding. So all that gold was still attached to some particle. And when we ground it finer, we released it so the density of the pure gold would settle down on the shaker table and be recovered. But but that is a that's a lot of gold. I'm gonna that that's enough gold that I'm gonna suck that out of there and we'll melt it down into a little button. We'll cupel it and uh, we can weigh it. And because I did 50 pounds, I can multiply that button by 40, and it'll tell us how much more gold per ton we have in our sack. The other thing here that's pretty interesting is there's no large coarse pieces of gold. It's all really really fine. So. Um, I think what that tells me is that crushing through our hammer mill liberates the large gold, but any fine gold that is still attached um, can be liberated with finer grinding. So I just want to throw that out there, but uh, let's uh, get this sucked out and get it cupelled and get it weighed. All right, guys, real quick abbreviated version. Uh, I sucked the gold out into this snuffer bottle. I'm going to take the straw of the snuffer bottle out, turn it over, and get the gold here in this blue shop towel. And then I'm going to put that shop towel, wring all the water out, put the shop towel in a cupel, which looks like this. I'm going to put it in a furnace, heat it up to about 1850 degrees. I'm going to put a little bit of bismuth metal in there, which is going to oxidize uh, in the oxygen in the furnace. It's going to take with it all the base metals and leave a little button of precious metal gold and a little bit of silver. It'll be an alloy, obviously, but this ore has very little silver. Um, so it'll be a nice little yellow button in the bottom there. Then we can get it weighed and figure out how much gold is left in our tailings. Free gold that we can recover by a grinding finder, I should say. We'll get that all burned off. And then I'll add my metal to it. 
All right, our metal should be melted by now and oxidizing. I don't know if you can see, it looks like little raindrops on the surface. So we'll let that go and uh, all that metal oxidize. All right, guys, you got it pulled out of the oven. It's cooled down a little bit here. But let's get it plucked out of there and get it weighed. Nice little gold bead. All right, guys, here's our scale. Here's our little bead. Point three eight seven grams from right about 50 pounds. So let me do some math. We'll figure out what we got. All right, guys, we ended up with about 15 grams a ton that we could recover in addition to what's already been recovered out of those tailings. So just goes to show you that uh, fine grinding uh, does liberate more gold. And this is a test that I think everyone should probably do in their ore to determine the grind size because I may have only recovered half by grinding to that 50% passing 50 mesh. Um, and so, so to, to know that up front is way, way important uh, before you buy a whole bunch of machinery and figure out, you know, you're, you're missing half your gold. So, um, I also want to do a little word of caution here just because this ore needs to grind really, really fine to get a high percentage. It does not mean that all ore needs to be ground super fine. I've seen some ores that have the gold is, is huge. It's, it's mostly large pieces and it doesn't need to be ground to 300 mesh to liberate a bunch of gold. Whereas this stuff, you might have a 80 or 90 percent liberation at uh, at 200 mesh grind or 150 mesh grind. So thanks for watching the video guys. If you have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.